what a wild week it has been for this games industry and really this entire world. We have one of the longest running franchises since the mid 2000s gearing up to finally take a year off. We have yet another Guerrilla Games Horizon title launching right next to a game that is being called one of the greatest of all time. If you don't know what I'm talking about in 2017, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn launched right next to Breath of the Wild and here in 2022, right next to Elden Ring getting stellar reviews. And then we have one of the most beloved games of all time potentially getting a sequel in the near future. We have the entire Ukrainian games industry rallying behind their country as they have, you know, become invaded. And then we have, again, more trouble happening at Bioware as once again, another executive producer, a lead developer on Dragon Age 4 has left the company. We're seeing the same pattern that we saw with Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem, which is not encouraging news. We also have EA making up some of the most bizarre, dumb excuses for why Battlefield 2042 failed. They've essentially rejected players' protests over the launch and post-launch, and many are just absolutely livid with how the company has reacted and supported this mess of a live service. Speaking of a game that had a terrible launch, Cyberpunk 2077 has finally shown some signs of life. So indeed, a lot is happening in this video game industry and a lot for us to break down and discuss. But before we dive into all of that, today's video is brought to you by Displate, one of my favorite partners to work with as this is a product that I love and use. As someone who has a passion for all kinds of entertainment, Displates allow me to express that passion and also feel inspired with whenever I am creating. Paper or canvas, in my opinion, nothing comes close to Displates metal posters, which comes in different sizes, finishes, and frames. Displate boasts over a million designs from areas like video games, manga, movies, comics, nature, history, and much more. When purchasing Displates, you can expect prints on demand with each signed by the master production, an easy to set up magnet mounting system which removes concerns over damaging your walls, and fast delivery, with shipping coming from the EU and having an expected delivery time of just four to five business days. From Assassin's Creed to Fallout to The Witcher to Star Wars, Displate has a number of partners which have provided beautiful prints from iconic franchises, some of which are my walls. If you're looking for more recommendations, such as this unique God of War print, which is a personal favorite of mine, I have my own collection list composed on my Displate profile for you to check out. And if you are interested in getting a Displate, follow the link in the description down below. You'll be helping to support the channel with each purchase. And for the next two weeks, you'll receive a 23% discount if you get one or two Displates. And if you get three or more, you'll receive a 27% discount. Anyway, big thank you to Displate for sponsoring the video. Take-Two Interactive CEO Strel Zelnick recently made this rather interesting TikTok. I guess he's trying to stand out or stand in with the kids. You know, how do you do fellow kids? That's Strel Zelnick. I suppose I really don't know how to break down a video like this and take it seriously. But Strel Zelnick, when he's not making TikToks, he also has some rather interesting takes on the future of Rockstar games and 2K games. Some that probably in the eyes of most gamers is gonna be some very unfortunate news. With Grand Theft Auto 6 being officially announced to be in development, something that I'm still not sure if we really needed an announcement for. Regardless, I guess it's nice that it was confirmed. Well, Strauss Zelnick, the CEO that oversees, you know, Rockstar Games, 2K Games, he had some interesting comments on the future of Grand Theft Auto, and then he pivoted to something that I'm sure some of you are already guessing, NFTs. And Strauss Zelnick said, you always have to be willing to be fresh, you always have to be willing to bring consumers what they want. The minute you try to protect the past, you become irrelevant. See, that thing about bringing consumers what they want, that's just not true. They'll push things in your face. We've already seen tons of celebrities, tons of people that do not care about art. They're just going out to try to find another avenue to make some revenue, and that's NFTs. It's the crypto bros and the celebrities that were promoting this crap. I think Reese Witherspoon, Brie Larson, those are the latest people that have been doing it. There's nobody that actually cares about creativity that is getting behind this crap. Anyway, Strauss Zelnick though continued to push this and he said, we want to make sure that consumers always have a good experience every time they engage with our properties and losing money on a speculation is not a good experience. So we're going to stay away from speculation. However, we're highly convinced there's an opportunity for NFTs to fit with Take-Two's offerings in the future. What that means, who knows, could that just be 2K games like NBA 2K, maybe? Could this stretch to, you know, Grand Theft Auto 6, which has already been rumored to incorporate some sort of cryptocurrency? Well, I guess only time will tell, but there definitely is some concerns because Take-Two, along with some of the more greedy publishers in this gaming industry, have shown time and time again that they do not really care about creativity. It's all about making the most money in the world. 2022 has arguably started off with some of the most significant news in gaming history 
history with uh, Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard and then Sony going ahead and buying Bungie. But all eyes are on the rest of the gaming industry and whether, well, any of these other publishers will be gobbled up. Eyes have been on Konami, Bandai Namco, Capcom, Ubisoft, CD Projekt Red. Those are the, some of the names that people have been, you know, throwing around. If there actually is, you know, acquisitions happening or if there's negotiations happening, none of us know at the moment. But there have been some rumors that we could be seeing more of that sometime maybe in this year. Well, we actually had Ubisoft respond to this in a recent financial conference about the possibility of them being acquired. And the company's CEO said that Ubisoft has always taken decisions in the interest of its stakeholders, which are both players and shareholders. According to the company's CEO, Ubisoft can remain independent thanks to its financial scale and portfolio of owned IPs. Gotta thank you for those Ubisoft microtransactions, pretty much. That being said, if there was an offer, the board of directors will of course review it in the interest of all stakeholders. And then the company's CEO responded to another question asking why Ubisoft has not received any offers, and the company's CEO, along with another executive, declined to speculate on the reason or whether they actually have received an offer, and they also reiterated that the company has high value assets in the scale to remain independent and create very meaningful value in the future in terms of workforce, engineering, technologies, IP, and strongly engaged communities. Now, I do have to acknowledge one thing. The consolidation is already happening. It's been happening the last couple of years in this video game industry. Whether it was Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard this year, it was going to happen no matter what. Whether that be Amazon, Apple, Meta, Facebook, whatever, all these big giant companies were eventually going to jump into the fold. And in the future, this is just going to continue to go down. So it's probably very likely sometime in the next couple of years, maybe even this year, we see Ubisoft acquired. Konami probably be up there as well. A lot of these companies are going to be under the umbrella of another giant mega corporation, and that's just the reality. This is always bound to happen. This is happening to all of the industries. Uh, you look to Hollywood, that's pretty much coalesced to just a couple of studios with Disney owning almost everything, and that will be the case for this video game industry. Right now, it's kind of like a ticking time bomb. I don't know if you really could say it's gone off yet, but we're going to see many more acquisitions in the future, and I guarantee probably Ubisoft will be one of them. Without a doubt, one of the biggest stories of maybe the last decade or so is the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and there has been a significant impact throughout this world, but there also has been an impact on this video game industry. We've seen many companies speaking out about this, but I think a lot of people don't understand that the Ukraine gaming industry has been something that's been growing significantly over the last decade or so. This is something that has grown, there's been some massive studios that have come out from them. One of the biggest examples of that would be the Stalker 2 developers, and they recently spoke out about the invasion, taking to their Twitter, saying as of today, Russia has officially declared war in Ukraine. Our country woke up with the sounds of explosions and weapons, and so on and so forth. They continued, they asked for people to support and aid their country through these tough times. And furthermore, there has also been some other gaming companies that operate in that same area, like their neighbor Poland. We've seen CD Projekt Red speak out. They said in a statement that they, um, the recent invasion on Ukraine, our friends and neighbors left us shocked and outraged. I've seen many developers of CDPR on Twitter absolutely in fear with what's happened. Um, they continued saying in solidarity with all victims of this aggression, CD Projekt has decided to support humanitarian aid efforts by donating 1 million Polish currency to a humanitarian aid group. And then we saw some other companies like 4A Games, the developers behind the Metro series, taking to Twitter saying, Dear friends, fans, partners, and brothers and sisters from Ukraine, we apologize for not getting in touch earlier. We needed to take care of our families and each other. There are no simple words to convey the horrors that happen in Ukraine at this very moment in the country that is home to many of us. None of us have ever thought of the world of the 21st century can get to the borderline beyond which our gaming scenarios start resembling reality. And then we had another Another gaming studio, 11-bit studio, saying, Today, Russian military forces attacked Ukraine. Uh, as a Polish game studio and creators of the globally recognized anti-war game, The War of Mine, one that directly speaks about the suffering and misery of civilians who are affected by war, we'd like to hereby announce our company's statement. We stand against the Russian invasion. Just words would be empty without meaningful act, though, and the timing is crucial, so the act is as follows. For the next seven days, all profits from The War of Mine, all its DLCs on all stores and all platforms will go to 
a special fund. A week from now, the money will be donated to the Ukrainian Red Cross to directly support victims of war in Ukraine. Let this message resonate with everything you know about this war and how war kills people, devastates their lives and homes. Let us, players and developers together, do everything we can to support victims of war in Ukraine. And this has been the case throughout this video game industry, not just in Poland and Ukraine. We've just seen many companies coming forward, speaking out about the horrors that are happening within that country right now. One of the most beloved games of all time is Fallout New Vegas, and it seems sometime in the near future, Obsidian Entertainment may be going back to that universe and making a sequel of some sorts. Reportedly, Jeff Grubb on his Giant Bomb show said this is very early, but people have begun to have talks and say those words in sentences, and those words are Obsidian and New Vegas 2. We're talking years and years away, there's at least an interest in conversations happening about making something like that actually a reality. Grubb continues, saying a lot of people at Microsoft think that this could work. There's a lot of interest to make it happen. So my initial reaction to this news report was honestly just extreme excitement. And then I tempered down a little bit and reminded myself that this is not the same Obsidian Entertainment that actually did make Fallout New Vegas. It has been about 12 years and many of the lead developers on that project have departed from Obsidian. One of those being Chris Avalon. I believe he was one of the lead designers on that game. And he actually spoke about this on Twitter and he said, I know nothing about a New Vegas 2, but I do hope Bethesda allows it. And he continued saying, That said, I take journalism coverage with a grain of salt, since the mention of New Vegas 2 was often used by the gaming press as clickbait during a slow game news cycle. Hope that's not the case, though. So the thing is with the Fallout New Vegas 2, even with the current day Obsidian, I think it's honestly amazing news, and it's also just because Bethesda's writers have just, they pale in comparison to what Obsidian can bring to the table. Uh, I don't need to go over what my problems with Fallout 4 and even even Fallout 76, but those games, the writing is just terrible. That, that's just, I'll leave it at that. But with Obsidian making a new follow game, you gotta remember that they are extremely busy, so it's gonna be a while from now. So they got a vow, they have Grounded that they're still working on, they also have the Outer Worlds 2, and then I imagine maybe they'd get around to a Fallout New Vegas 2, but years ago they did talk about this as a possibility. Fergus Yerkart, the company's CEO, said that they wanted to set it in the Boneyard, so maybe that is something that continues. Their vision could change, though. I don't imagine it's going to be called just Fallout New Vegas 2. It's probably going to be Fallout somewhere else, you know, Fallout Texas, Fallout the Boneyard. Who knows, but it is interesting that this is a possibility now. I think a couple years ago, under just Bethesda when they were alone, this probably wouldn't have happened, and Todd Howard indicated that himself. He pretty much said that there's no reason to have an outside company like Obsidian Entertainment, remember, at the time, making a new Fallout game. We have a number of in-house studios that could make this happen, make a new Fallout game, which is why I always thought maybe an arcane Fallout could have been something that was interesting, but regardless, things have changed, and now Obsidian Entertainment, Bethesda Game Studios, In Exile Entertainment, all gaming companies that have had experience with the Fallout IP are now under the Microsoft umbrella. I'm honestly just hopeful to see more Fallout made by somebody other than Bethesda Game Studios, because the time that they get to Fallout 5, it's probably going to be like 2030, and I really don't want to wait that much longer for a Fallout game, because currently the only Fallout fix is Fallout 76, and that is just mediocre at best. And yes, I again do acknowledge that Fallout 76 has indeed gotten better, but it's still not a good experience. It still is bad in many, many ways. I don't care how many Reddit threads, Twitter posts there are that saying, oh, you know, Fallout 76 made a complete comeback. No, it did not. It's, it's a mess still. And Bethesda support has been lackluster the last year or so since Wastelanders released. I actually thought it was going in the right direction, but not so much now. So please, follow New Vegas to when, Obsidian? Now, since we are on the topic of Bethesda, it is worth mentioning some recent news involving the Bethesda.net launcher. You know, there's this weird trend a couple of years ago in which every single gaming company had to have their own launcher. Everybody was becoming annoyed by that, and I guess that's not really a problem because all of these gaming companies are now being purchased by Microsoft and Sony, but anywho, Bethesda.net launcher is no more, and that is just great news because it was a piece of crap launcher, and now it is pretty much dead. And that, I think the first game that it was really needed was Fallout 76, and all of us rolled our eyes at the time, and now it is dead after all these six years in existence. I imagine Microsoft pulled the cord, and now everybody who has used that, if they bought games, it's now just being migrated over to Steam. And honestly, I guess that is a good resolution at the end of the day. But I will say that uh, I'm just hopeful that we don't see any more of these launchers from these companies. Let's just let it die, please. Leave everything on Steam. That's all we need. 
Earlier on in this month, EA had to speak to investors and they had to reveal the unfortunate reality, and that is Battlefield 2042 did not meet expectations. This is becoming a trend with EA Dice produced games because the last couple of years, Battlefront 2 did not meet expectations. Battlefield 5 did not meet expectations, and now here we are once again. And I do have to admit one thing, and that is that Respawn Entertainment has become the new golden child over at Electronic Arts in terms of their non-sports games, because EA Dice has been delivering a lot of duds the last couple of years. And I remember a time that this franchise was held in high regard. It was levied against Call of Duty as the superior product, the better shooter experience, but now that's just not the case. Let me just be blunt for a second and say, you know you done fucked up when Battlefield 5, Battlefront 2, Battlefield 1, Battlefield 4 all have more concurrent players on Steam versus the giant new release that came out just a couple of months ago. It's honestly baffling that this has happened because I was of the expectation that Battlefield 2042 is going to kill it this, uh, well, last fall in 2021. I really did think it was going to outgun Call of Duty and Halo Infinite, but that was just not the case. But yes, earlier this month, Electronic Arts CEO Andrew Wilson talked to investors and he said that while some problems arose from the difficulties of working from home because of the pandemic, he said that some fans just didn't care for some of the changes that developers made to the formula, which, which was pretty much just some t sort of monstrosity of combining elements from all of the popular shooters of various franchises that nobody wanted. People wanted the Battlefield DNA and they did not get that. Just so you understand how disappointed and angry Battlefield fans are with this franchise and this game right now, there's a change.org petition with over 225,000 signatures wanting refunds for Battlefield 2042 on all platforms. The main paragraph says EA's release of Battlefield 2042 was a mockery of every customer who purchased the video game for $70 due to EA's false advertising. Battlefield 2042 has cost consumers millions of dollars in damages and upset thousands of customers worldwide. Now, EA has pretty much remained quiet on this petition, have not responded at all, but they did respond to a different report, one in which one of the company's executives pretty much blamed Halo Infinite in some regards to the failure of Battlefield 2042, which is just, just hilarious. But EA said that this did not happen. They said to PC Gamer in a statement, these stories are not accurately capturing the discussion in the context, which was an in-depth and very humble internal conversation about the recent Battlefield launch. It was about key learnings and actions we are taking, not blaming external factors. Now, the problem with that response is that it's not true and EA basically fucking lied and they tried getting away with it. But Tom Henderson, Gaming Insider, actually had an audio clip of EA's chief studios office Officer Laura Meal is saying just that, and PC Gamer has since verified that what his statement is true. And this is what the EA executive specifically said. We launched an early access on a Thursday night in the US and Friday morning and afternoon in Europe and Asia. The game was stable. The mean time between failure and hours of the game was in the green by industry standards and the early critical reception was good. The day-to-day -day player retention looked strong through the weekend, but then things started to turn. You know, when people actually got to play the game for more than a couple of hours. The following Monday, Halo did a surprise prize release their multiplayer mode. It was a small segment of the game, but it was very polished and it was not a favorable comparison to our experience given some of the bugs and polish issues we had. Yeah, I don't know guys, this since verified statement certainly sounds like EA is throwing some blame at Halo Infinite, but this has been the case with EA DICE the last couple of years. They just never are accountable for their actions. They just keep on doing this, this endless cycle of mistakes because they just don't listen. It's always somebody else, it's something else. It's never, hey, maybe we just didn't make a good experience. Maybe our design choices were terrible. Maybe we didn't understand our actual fans and what they wanted. And again, if they keep on doing this, Battlefield's probably going to be a dead franchise just like Medal of Honor is in a couple of years. But very nice, very nice of Electronic Arts to respond to this statement and lie pretty much saying that this didn't happen when there's verified proof but not at all respond to the 225,000 fans that petitioned against the launch of Battlefield 2042. Very weird, very weird uh, moves by Electronic Arts. But indeed, as it currently stands, everybody is avoiding Battlefield 2042. Nobody cares to jump into play. It's a game that everybody has chosen to forget. DICE certainly is not rushing to change that as they can't even release a new scoreboard change on time. And then the game has found itself in some other sorts of controversy in terms of the recent world events in which some skins just 
very poorly timed. What I mean by that is just last week, DICE offered then pulled a limited release skin called the Grin Reaper for a Russian attack helicopter and uh, yeah, just really bad timing and it is worth mentioning a couple of months ago there was another skin called the little green men back in november of 2021 outrage quickly emerged and dice quickly removed an unintentional reference to a real world issue in their own words so yeah definitely not much going right for the battlefield franchise at this moment now another EA game studio which has been basically falling apart the last couple of years with hundreds of senior developers leaving is Bioware and we recently got an update on their next game Dragon Age 4 from their new GM Gary McKay and he said for the next Dragon Age we are right in the middle of production which is a great feeling our blueprint was completed last year so we're now focused on building out our vision creating amazing environments deep characters strong gameplay impactful writing emotional cinematics and much more the blueprint for the game is well understood and the team is focused. There has been some reporting coming from Jeff Grubb of Venture Beat, which has been basically confirming this that development is moving ahead and has been going smoothly. Now, what that actually has to do with quality and if this is going to be a worthwhile experience, we won't know until the game releases. But I do have to admit, we've been seeing a lot of the same missteps that we saw with Anthem and Mass Effect Andromeda, in which senior developers' leadership on these franchises have been departing at a scary rate. Obviously, some of the big departures happened a couple of years with this Dragon Age franchise in which Mike Laidlaw, one of the creative directors on Dragon Age left, Fernando Mello, a lead producer on Dragon Age left, and then back in November of 2021, a senior creative director, Matt Goldman, left the studio in which it was said that they mutually agreed to part ways, and now we have another departure. When executive producer Mark Dara left with Casey Hudson back, I believe, at the end of 2020, this individual was supposed to be taking over, Christian Daly and he has now decided to leave the company. In this blog post, it said that, as we continue our journey, we wanted to wish Christian Daly a heartfelt farewell from Bioware. Christian started with us back in 2018 and has been a big influence on our games and leadership team, most recently as executive producer over Dragon Age's development. The games industry is ever changing though, and sometimes folks want to go and try new things. We understand, but we will miss him as a friend and as a colleague. And sure, that is true, but the amount of people, the veteran staff that Bioware Bioware has lost the last couple of years is very much not encouraging for the quality and what to expect in the future with games like Mass Effect 5 and Dragon Age 4. So as I've been saying the last couple of years, this is not the same Bioware that made those beloved games years ago. This is Bioware in name only. This company has a lot to prove. I personally don't have any idea what to expect with these next upcoming games. Sure, I want to be excited for the next Mass Effect and Dragon Age, but I don't know what this company is made of. And based on what we've seen in recent history with Anthem and Mass Effect Andromeda, I'm not really expecting much. But hey, there have been some reports saying that development is moving smoothly ahead. So hopefully that means that Bioware can produce something that is good, but only time will tell. Throughout this video, I've made mention to Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard, a deal that will not be complete until probably the summer of 2023 as it goes through the legal system. Now, what's interesting is that sometime next year, we may be seeing the first real impact of this deal. What I mean by that is a potential delay of the next Call of Duty game. Not the Call of Duty game that is set to release this fall, which is supposedly Modern Warfare 2, but the game coming after that. According to Bloomberg, who talked to multiple people familiar with this situation, Call of Duty 2023 is set to be delayed due to a recent entry that is not being named, not performing to expectations, obviously Call of Duty Vanguard, leading Activision to rethink its approach for the series. Some have said that this has nothing to do with Microsoft's acquisition. I beg to differ. I truly think that Activision, feeling a little bit more flexible right now, being that this deal is going to be going down sometime in the near future. My personal perspective on this decision is that this is smart. This is long overdue. Call of Duty just needs a break. Now, responding to this report, an Activision spokesman said, We have an exciting slate of premium and free-to-play Call of Duty experiences for this year, next year, and beyond. Reports of anything otherwise are incorrect. We look forward to sharing more details when the time is right, which is a non-denial of this report. So hopefully that is the case. I think that this franchise definitely needs some rejuvenation, and maybe that is doing it by giving the developers, the people behind these games, some more time to work their magic because Call of Duty just definitely needs to take some time off and breathe a little bit. 
Next, a few smaller stories I wanted to touch on briefly before we get to our final big story. Street Fighter VI was announced to a lot of excitement, although the game's logo has been ridiculed as indeed it looks bland and also appears to be an altered $80 Adobe stock image which is just truly wild. Guardians of the Galaxy was one of the big surprises last year, a very solid narrative experience, and just like with what feels like every Square Enix experience, it undershot their expectations, and at this point, they really need to do a better job marketing their games and also being realistic. Also, revive Deus Ex, you cowards. One of the more worrying aspects of the Star Wars KOTOR remake was writer Sam Mags's involvement. Mags is well known for having controversial takes, and her role with potential changing parts of KOTOR's story made some fans feel that she could ruin it. Mags in the past claimed that she was virtually hurt in Grand Theft Auto V, routinely lashed out at Last Jedi critics, and even admitted she was not a fan of KOTOR, although when she announced she was working on the remake, she called it an all-time favorite of hers. Anyway, with all that said, Mags is no longer at Aspire Media, quitting and no longer working on this remake. Star Wars KOTOR 2 lead designer Chris Avalone responded to her departure, wondering why a writer was even needed for this remake as the story and characters should have remained the same as before. Now to our final story of the day, this is all about CD Projekt Red, with the new companies that are branching out from them and also the evolution of Cyberpunk 2077. One of the biggest long-term issues for CDPR is retaining talent. As I investigated last year, more than half of the developers responsible for The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt are no longer at the company. Since Cyberpunk 2077's launch, we've also seen many more depart. The company has had trouble retaining talent, especially programmers and those on the technical side of game development. I bring this up as a new game studio has emerged, one composed of multiple lead developers on The Witcher 3. Rebel Wolves, interesting name, was announced by Witcher 3 game director Konrad Tomaskiewicz, who left CDPR last year. Rebel Wolves' first game will be a AAA story-driven dark fantasy RPG built in Unreal Engine. Engine 5. The game studio also includes one of the lead writers on Cyberpunk 2077 and one of the lead animators on The Witcher 3, along with other former CD Projekt Red developers. This is an example of the consequences CDPR faces with how they've gone about game development, something many current and former developers have criticized in the past. But as it stands with what CDPR has been working on, we recently saw the release of the next-gen update of Cyberpunk 2077. This version is obviously what should have been the day one version, and an important reminder that CDPR staff knew that. One developer before launch even said that the game would not be ready until early 2022, and well, here we are, with a product that at the very least feels closer to what it should have been. Patch 1.5 includes a variety of new changes, vehicle AI has been improved, there's some new weapon animations, NPC AI has been upgraded, there's new rewards, crowd density has grown, there's new ray tracing features on PC along with better performance, apartment customization, in-game customization of your character, enemy AI is also smarter and more brutal, the RPG mechanics have been given an overhaul. It's a good update, just an update that should not be happening 15 months after launch. CDPR has a lot more work to do to improve their damaged reputation with gamers. This is definitely a start, but there still is a ton of animosity being directed at them for how everything has been handled, and that will not be changing anytime soon. This is the consequence that they will face for quite some time with The Witcher 4, the next cyberpunk game, and whatever else is planned for the future. Again though, I do want to give a big shout out to today's sponsor, Displate. Well manufactured posters with a variety of designs that you do not want to miss out on. Make sure to check out the link in the description for my own recommendations and a huge discount. But yeah, much is going on in this video game industry. Right now, like many of you, I'm endlessly sucking it on up in Elden Ring. But anyway, as always, I do want to know your thoughts on the topics that we discussed today down in the comments section below but thank you for watching make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or found any informative value and make sure to follow my other social media accounts for updates on new videos links are always down in the description below i'm most active on twitter giving opinions on news that i do not always get into video form so do make sure to follow me over there also check out my discord for all sorts of discussion on games and again thank you for joining consider subscribing for more videos like this and i'll see you later